Articulation Radio. Articulation. and salutations welcome to another informative and entertaining episode of articulation radio i am your host the honorable walking man you know how we do things here at articulation radio we will start off the day's episode by taking a glance at the news headlines and today's new segment is sponsored by BePublished.org. These are three of the news headlines and events I saw today, Tuesday, September 21st, 2021, when visiting EliteValuesNews.com. Some Americans plan to claim religious exemptions to circumvent vaccine requirements. Asian buyers outbid Europe for spot supplies of U.S. natural gas. And black Americans are angered at the cruel treatment of Haitian refugees by ICE and border officials. Those are three of the news headlines and events I saw when visiting EliteValuesNews.com on your behalf. As you know, so much happens in this world of ours, and the staff at Elite Values News makes it a point to keep you abreast of as much as possible. So check us out anytime within any hour. Matter of fact, you can go right now, any minute within the hour, check out the news headlines under any of the multiple categories, and press refresh to just keep getting new feeds. Head over right now and get your news feel right now at Elite Values News. I'm Goddess Sage reporting live. Looking for the latest news? Visit Elite Values News. EliteValuesNews.com has all the latest news and information. Check out the headlines hourly. EliteValuesNews.com. Visit now. Do you want to be published? Are you looking for a high-quality, low-cost way to be published with a fast turnaround? Visit BePublished.org to publish today. www.bepublished.org. BePublished.org. Publish today. Books, movies, and music. Listeners, we love you, we hear you, and I am so glad to be here with you today on this episode of Articulation Radio. I have an interview coming up for you, and I also have a topic, so stay tuned.
artistreview.com. All artists need a platform. The Artist Review makes sure you have the one you need to put your work in front of your fans. Artistreview.com. Artist, R-E-V-U-E dot com.
If you are a savvy senior who's seeking a lifestyle club that's centered around you, visit sittingroom.xyz today. The Sitting Room, sittingroom.xyz, where savvy seniors socialize, get event invites, organize among themselves, as well as obtain merchandise and get engaged to create new things. The Sitting Room, sittingroom.xyz. Visit today. Today's episode of Articulation Radio was kicked off for you by playing some excellent cuts, and we have more coming on tap for you. But today's episode, I want to let you know real quick, is titled Managing Life's Jungles, and I'll tell you the reason why here in a moment. But those songs you heard were I Can't Help It by Myron Mills Project. And before that, you heard at the top of this show, I Used to Treat You Right by Mad Modishi featuring Dayon. Now, before I pay, play Pink Glazed Pastries 1 by Anders Bolton for you, I'm going to tell you a little bit about why I titled today's episode Managing Life's Jungles. It's because we have our very own Goddess Sage, and I'll play one of her cuts for you a little later on, but we have Goddess Sage coming on, and she's going to be interviewing the Arthur Ryan Casso. He's an Amazon best-selling author. The title of his book is Wild Happy. You may already have a copy of that book. If not, head over and grab Wild Happy by Ryan Casso. And you can get that from Amazon or any book retailer in the, in the world. And that is Ryan, R-Y-A-N, Casso, C-A-S-S-E-A-U. And the name of his book is Wild Happy. And it's all about, well, I'll let God is sage and Ryan tell you all about that. But, yeah, go over, support the project. And I'm going to bring on Pink Glaze Pastries 1 by Anders Botham for you. And then we're going to bring on that interview and some more cuts. Have you always wanted to start a business but can't seem to get it off the ground? Need help building a website? Contact The Conglomerate, 972-880-8316. Or visit theconglomerate.work, T-H-E-C-O-N-G-L-O-M-E-R-A-T-E dot W-O-R-K. The conglomerate dot work nine seven two eight eight zero eight three one six. Start your new business today. You are listening to Articulation Radio. Head on over to articulationmedia.club and let us know your thoughts. Phone lines are open right now at Articulation Radio. Call 312-899-6237. That's 312-899-6237. Do you frequently shop online and you're looking for a new place to shop? Join the club, JeffersonTaylor.club, where models, designers, inventors, and other creators offer customers the best products at fair prices. Jefferson Taylor, JeffersonTaylor.club. Join the club. Shop today, JeffersonTaylor.club.
peoplewarmer.com. Book your travel today. Peoplewarmer.com. Wherever you want to stay. Peoplewarmer.com. Book everything you need. Peoplewarmer.com. Go ahead whenever you please. And if you need advertising, marketing, and promotions, add on an S and head on over to peoplewarmers.com. That's P-E-O-P-L-E-W-A-R-M-E-R-S.com. Peoplewarmers.com. For all your media relations, public relations, marketing, advertising, and promotional needs, peoplewarmers.com. Articulation Radio is very pleased to have with us today, people. The best-selling author, Mr. Ryan Castro, is on with us, and we're going to talk about that book of his that you already, I'm sure, have not only on your shelf there at home, but probably in your hand right now, that wild, happy by Ryan Castro. And for those of you who don't yet have that book, it's not too late. Head on over to Amazon or any book retailer in the world and grab that up, whether it's from your local bookstore or your mom and pop shop there in Mogadishu or whether it is on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, wherever you want. Grab up Wild Happy by Ryan Castell. And so we're going to dive deep and find out a few little nuggets. Um, Mr. Ryan, welcome to Articulation Radio. Tell us real quick, what is it like right now in Pennsylvania? How is it feeling? Uh, thanks, Has uh, autumn Sage. come it early? Is, uh, autumn, you know, we got a sneak peek uh, earlier this week, and now, unfortunately, I think it's getting hot again. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> yes, yes. So the summer is fighting back like, no, it's not your turn yet. Wait, Autumn. Just mm-hmm. wait. Yeah, so fall back, fall. And now tell us about your, I would say, why, how this even came about. I know that, yes, um, you know, we're told that pretty much, Your journey, your adventure, I would say, that even led to the experience that led to the book Wild Happy was, I would say, a culmination of 10 years of fantasizing about going out into the jungle and collecting plants and learning from the the locals who rely on the forest and these plants for medicines and, and learning about the things that they've discovered and how to make this work. Um, so how, what, is it that, you know, you'd always been interested in going in a jungle and then, then I want to get into the medicinal part, but the jungle, who, what, 10 years of fantasizing about going to the jungle, what sparked your interest in the jungle in the first place, let alone wanting to travel to a remote jungle to where for 10 years, that was what your focus was, was making sure that, yeah, yeah. So tell us about that. What sparked your interest in jungle excursions? Sure. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I was kind of a, a pretty typical, just sort of smart suburban kid I got good grades and my mom was a nurse and so you know everyone just every adult just said oh so so you're going to be a doctor you're going to be a doctor and you know as a kid you just sort of like the attention you say oh yeah yeah I'll be I'll be an I'll be a doctor you know this seems to make the adults happy no big deal um right and then there was actually uh I had a little a little incident um I was in sixth grade my brother was in fourth you know we came home on the school buses both my parents were working so they weren't home yet ran into this accident. We had a, a big glass door in the back of our house where the, the hide a key was. And my brother was, was waiting for a call from a friend, rushed a little bit too quickly, forgot the door was locked and put his arm oh. right through the door. And, uh, you know, so I'm there, I'm in sixth grade. I'm the only one to deal with it. Um, I'm trying to deal with the blood and wrap it up and try to find a neighbor to call 911. And, you know, long story short, he ended up getting 60 stitches. He was fine. Oh. Um, but uh, honestly, the, not only was it, was it a pretty traumatic little, little afternoon, but then I, then I get to the doctor and, and they say, oh, we understand you want to be a doctor. You know, come on back and, and see your brother. And his, his arm was all numb. But he's, this doctor is showing me how he's, you know, pulling these stitches through his arm and tying them in. And I'm in sixth grade. I've had a pretty rough afternoon. And I saw this and was just wow. like, oh, no. <laughs> so right. I was like, uh, I don't. I don't think the blood and skin stuff is for me. So it was like, okay, yeah. big pivot. And uh, you know, then it was like, okay, I, I thought I knew what I wanted to do, even though I was a kid, and I'd always liked plants. And actually, an uncle I really respected 
gave me a, a copy of a book called Tales of a Shaman's Apprentice. And it was about this scientist that was in this whole field called ethnobotany, which was basically the study of how ethno culture used botany plants. So mm. I thought this was so fascinating. And it was like, is this a real thing? Because if this is a real thing, like, <laughs> this is, I think, exactly what I'm looking for. All right. So, uh, yeah, and that was it. I mean, I was only in, in like, seventh grade when I kind of came to this conclusion. And it just, I was pretty laser focused from that point on. Uh, college, grad school, like, this was the goal. Like, how do I go to the jungle and, and see how people are using plants as medicines? And And then, of course, to do that, it was, well, the best way to do that is to get as far removed from society as possible, you know, get away from all the modern pharmaceuticals where yeah. the people still rely on those plants. So it was, that was the, the path. Wow. And all of that pretty much started from a book that you received um, at a time when you were, I would say, um, still fresh and open and knowing, of, of course, you know, what you, that you still had a genuine interest in medicine, but just not in the, traditional direction that you had already been being pushed in and it's like the book came along at a perfect time and it's like ah this is what I want now this is up my alley and wow and you were never able to let go of that initial inspiration and it grew into really you're having your very own adventure and and tell us about how you even sourced out or why you chose um, the particular jungle you did in Papua New Guinea um, tell us how it came about, and I'm sure you probably looked at various ones, but how did you identify that particular one? Yeah, no, it's a great question. It's really funny. I was actually just talking with a friend yesterday who finished the book, and he asked that exact same question. Why Papua New Guinea? <laughs> Why that little island? Um, it seems so random, and, and in some ways it is. Uh, you know, like I said, I was looking for places as remote as possible. And my PhD yeah. advisor, he was working in Laos and Vietnam, and he wanted me to go to Cambodia. And at the time, I thought, okay, you know, Cambodia has really remote parts of the jungle. And then I read that I think at the time, um, you know, when I, was, when I was planning this research and all that, there were still about 5,000 people getting injured or killed by landmines every year in the jungles of Cambodia, left over from oh. you know, the, the Khmer Rouge and all of this. And I thought, you know what? I've gotten myself psyched up. I can deal with spiders and snakes and tropical diseases. That's all fine. But um, yeah, landmines, that, that right. wasn't on my like, list. Right, like, no, that's a little too much adventure. <laughs> like, no, that's yeah, literally yeah. an adventure so, killer. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I, remember, I remember my advisor, and he was, he was a very wise man, but he said, oh, but, but, you know, those are tucked away in hidden pockets of the jungle. And I looked at him <laughs> and said, isn't that exactly where I would be going? Right. Um, so, so, yeah, Cambodia was out. And then it was, you know, it, in the academic world, there, it's, it's all about, I mean, like anything, right? It, it's networking, collaborations. My advisor uh, knew a professor, like had some really loose contact with a professor at the University of Papua New Guinea. And oh. obviously Papua New Guinea had a lot of remote jungles. And I just sort of said, hey, can I, can I kind of pull on this thread, see if they'd be open to – to, you know, the opportunity there to collaborate on this. And, um, and yeah, that's kind of how Papua New Guinea got chosen. And then I literally just kind of researched the country and said, well, what's the most remote province of Papua New Guinea? And that's where I'll go. That there's something to be said cool. about the, uh, uh, you know, th there's a level of naivety that, you know, now I'm, uh, you know, it's been, almost a couple of decades after that trip. And, and I look back and, and it's in the book as well. I mean, reflecting on the fact that, you know, now it's like a lot of these decisions were, were definitely based on that sort of invulnerability and naivety of youth of like, yeah, it'll be fine. What's the worst that'll happen? And, you know, now right. I'm a parent, things like that. And I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't think I would have taken the same trip, <laughs> you know, knowing what I know now and how I feel about the world mm -hmm. now. And, you know, there's, there's a lot more, um, pragmatism I think but uh but it worked at the time beautiful and people we are talking to the Arthur Ryan Cassell for those of you who are just tuning in to Articulation Radio I am Goddess Sage and I strongly encourage you to head on over to amazon.com well anywhere that you prefer ordering your books because I know some of you are like oh I, I hate Amazon Amazon taking over everything well 
in truth, you know and I know that if you had a business that you had developed and you have a chance to connect with a company that's going to pay you substantially, you're going to accept that contract too. So don't be letting your jealousy show. You know, just go to Amazon, wherever it is you want to go, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, Borders, your mom and pop shop down the corner from you, grab up this book, Wild Happy by Ryan Cassell. And people, this is not just a book about a person's, I would say, um, tracing through the jungles of Africa. No, this is actually a book that it says in equal parts, it's humorous, it's unnerving, it's uplifting, and it's reflective. But it literally captures every single experience of a bewildered boy and the lost world that took him, I would say, into their little hidden crevices, revealed their hidden secrets to him. And he, of course, is sharing with you some of these excellent gems that literally changed his life forever. And let's talk about one of the changes, Mr. Cassell, um, that was a permanent change in your life from that trip, what were, um, I would say, or what was the main thing that was your takeaway from there? Other than, of course, we know that, yes, you did achieve your goal of, and we're going to get into the um, medicinal sides of it, but what was the most permanent lesson, most life-altering experience that you had there? Yeah, it's it's a great question. Uh, You know, part of the I think the beauty of it taking so long for me to write this up, you know, is, is that it's given, you know, there is this, you know, I say uh, experiences are like seeds that sometimes take a lifetime to bloom. And, you know, this is really the case with, with my experience in Papua New Guinea. I was young. I was so fo- focused on, on the work, on the science, collecting the plants, just getting the work done, getting out of there. And I really kind of missed a lot of the big picture. I mean, it seeped in. And over time, what I realized is that, you know, I had sort of stumbled on this very unique pocket of the world. It was this little island uh, with very few people, a lot of resources. These people had a pretty simple life. I mean, in general, I think a lot of us, when we think of you know, the developing world, we think of, oh, all this poverty and all this misery. But in reality, I mean, these were some of the happiest, just deeply happy, deeply contented people that I had ever experienced. And it was, it was not a couple people. It was like the entire culture I was pretty content. And, and I sort of started reflecting on, you know, why this is and what, what is the magic here? And, and these were a lot of the, the real gems uh, to, to take away was the idea that they, they weren't so focused on money or achievement or success or title. I mean, they really didn't have that. What they had was time, and they spent time doing things that they wanted to do and, and really prioritizing people and relationships, and that ultimately that's what led to this deep contentment. I mean, they weren't kind of, kind of caught up in the rat race like so many of us here where we're just, you know, hustling so hard. And, and I know, you know, there's a lot of that message out there, right? That's like, you know, productivity, just be more efficient, get more done, achieve more. And that's where happiness is. And it was like, I, and I was there with that mentality. I got to get stuff done. And, and really, I, I kind of left realizing, you know, that's, that's not really the right advice. You know, I'm looking at all these contented people that have never gotten a promotion in their life. <laughs> it certainly doesn't seem mm-hmm. to be holding them down. Yes. And, you know, and often we do, um, you know, here in, I would say, Western um, thought societies have it to where people usually do focus more on the material elements of things and on, I would say, the unnecessary outside gratification of having others to validate certain things, whereas we once we grow past that, um, then we do finally accomplish what those people there that you saw had, where we finally realize relationship and time are truly the greatest commodities. You know, everything else is really just extra, you know, but um, yeah, time and relationship yeah. truly are the most important things that we really have been gifted outside of life itself. Um and now let's dig into um, ways that you learned to enhance life while you were there in addition to that new perspective that you were able to find. Share with us some of the healing wisdom that you found. What was, I would say, um, one of the most surprising 
um, discoveries that you found there among the plants and um, what they were able to do? Where Was there like a plant that looked like it was extremely scary and then they were able to tell you, oh, no, you know, this is for that? Or was there a plant that looked like it was perfectly safe and it was only good for medicinal purposes? Tell us what was, like, I would say the greatest eye-opener of the healing wisdom that was imparted to you there. Well, yeah, it was it was a really interesting journey, you know, talking to people from all different backgrounds. And part of my research, too, was to see how they were retaining this knowledge. Because as the world does kind of become more globalized, sometimes, you know, there's a lot of fear, significant fear that, that some of this knowledge is being lost. You know, the, the younger generations, they don't want to hear what, what their grandparents know about the healing right. plants or how they use these things. They're more interested in, you know, getting off to the big city and things like that. So it, mm-hmm. it was really interesting with specific plants, you know, here I had this unique opportunity where I was going to talk to all these people and, and gather all these plants, collect them. And then the second half of my of my PhD work was then to take them back to the labs in Chicago and actually try to analyze their medicinal chemistry, try to see if we could you know, identify active compounds and, and potential medicines. So, you know, there was this second half that when I was on the island, you know, of course, I didn't have those answers yet, but lots of little asterisks and stars next to little comments saying, oh, man, I can't wait to see what is in this thing. Um, it was really interesting. Some of the people that I would talk to, some of the elders, and I, I would show up at a at a village and we, we'd say we'd travel all day or two days and we'd show up at this village and we would ask them, you know, there's limited time. I can't talk to everyone. Who do you collectively think I should talk to? And And oftentimes it was just very obvious. Oh, well, you have to talk to him or, oh, you have to talk to her. And, and I remember this one woman, or this one village had a very nice older man that they, they sort of referred to as like their shaman. And then they really also wanted me to talk to this woman who was quirky and they referred to as a witch. And I thought, okay, okay well, I, this is the first, quote, witch I had run into. So I was really excited <laughs> to, uh, to talk to her. And she was quite a character. And she took me through the jungle and she knew all these things. And, you know, by now I had identified a lot of these plants so I kind of I kind of had like a a little test to see like did did she really know what she was talking about you know but she she knew the names of the plants and she knew what they were and there were a couple she'd pull aside and she'd do talking about how amazing this plant is and I have to say well what what is it used for I mean you keep talking about you know being this big powerful medicine you know what what do you use it for and she said well we haven't figured that out yet we haven't figured that out yet, but but we know that it is big, powerful medicine. We just don't know what it does. It was like, okay, this is definitely a different a different perspective than what we would. I can't imagine right. going into Walgreens and someone handing me something and going, this is really great. I don't know what it does, but, you know, this is what you need. Right, but this is great. It's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, just in case it'll do the wrong thing, just keep it away from me. But thank you for the warning. You know, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. And what there, um, and and I, I would imagine that, you know, because you did mention how the younger ones, you know, are pretty much kind of like, you know, the young ones here where, you know, for the most part, they're not trying to really um, hold on to some of the um, nuggets of wisdom that the older generation have because they have their own goals and ideas that are more connected to things that are a bit more removed from that, unfortunately. But um, were there any young people there in the village that you happened to run across um, that really were sitting at the feet um, of these elders and trying to accept this tacit knowledge? Uh, Absolutely. And and one of the, you know, one of the interesting patterns that I noted was that uh, with multiple children in a family, it would be the second or the third child because, Typically what would happen is, you know, the, the older child would have these, you know, grander ambitions and, and the family would, would try to save up or try to do something or arrange some kind of transport so that, you know, hey, to, to give their, their older child this, this better life. And so, but oftentimes what would happen is even if they left the island and they went to, to Port Moresby, the capital town, um, you know, finding work and having skills and, and, in the city, you know, it, it, Port Moresby is a, a kind of typical developing world city in that there are way too many people compared to the number of opportunities that really exist. Yeah. So there's a lot of sort of social welfare type programs and people just, you know, sort of homeless. And it's really just not a better life. So what would happen right, is more Western second living. and the third child. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the second and third child would see how 
oh, you know, my bro- my big brother had all these ambitions, and I looked up to him, but uh, he's been gone for like three or four years now, and, and occasionally we, we end up hearing about how things are not going well. So, okay, I'm not going to go there. Uh, Grandpa, why don't you tell me everything you know, because I want this village life, and let's keep doing this. So, yeah, it was, it was, it was a great way to maintain that culture. Beautiful, beautiful balance. And now, and and definitely, I want to hear about um, some of the funny moments that you had there, um, some of the more humorous aspects of your adventure. Oh, and congratulations as well on obtaining your PhD. And now tell us about, you know, some of the humorous moments um, that you encountered when you were there, your funny memories. Wow. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, going to a culture that's so different. I mean, it's the, the like fish out of water scenario was just happening all the time. Um, unfortunately, and this is, you know, for, for people that, that have gone out and traveled, you know, a lot of the stories end up being related to either food or uh, what happens after we're done <laughs> digesting the food, right? So, I mean, so many of these stories where – uh, I remember the first the first night that, you know, where people started to get to know me and they had like a, a welcoming party and they don't have very many lights. They had one kind of light at the opposite end of this area we were hanging out and they had all these big bowls of food. And I'm just kind of going through and I'm picking different pieces. And I'm a pretty adventurous eater. I mean, you kind of have to be to, to go to these faraway places. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I couldn't really see what I was grabbing. And then I got back to the to a little stump, and there was some a kerosene lantern there, and I, I finally got a glimpse of my plate, and I thought, man, I I don't know what this one thing is that I have grabbed, <laughs> and I could tell it was like a piece of some kind of animal, but I don't know what kind of animal, and you know, it, it was not an attractive piece. I mean, there was some fur on it, and there was some meat, <laughs> and, and I was trying to figure out what it is while I'm, you know, while someone's trying to talk to me and they're broken English. And so I'm trying to follow what they're saying because their English is not very good. And I'm trying to look at my plate and eat the other things on my plate, the safe things, you know, the, the rice right. and the fried banana. And I'm like, okay, this stuff I, I'm, I'm safe with. And finally it dawned on me that I am pretty sure even to this day that I grabbed a piece that was basically the animal's genitalia. And that's what I had. <laughs> And I suddenly was like, ah, I don't know what I'm going to do here. You know, everyone's <laughs> staring at me and watching me. They want to see if I'm enjoying their food. And I'm like, I, I can't do this. This is not, this is not going to work. Um, <laughs> so it was, I, I did get away with it. I went back up because I was talking about how, I don't know, the, the bananas were so delicious. And I walked up and, oh, look, the, banana, the bowl of bananas is right next to this other bowl. And I just kind of, you know, shook it back into the bowl and got some more bananas. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so I, I saved myself there. But, uh, That's yeah, that was funny. Yeah. Well, and, and, least, and, and the positive know. part is he came back to the U.S. and immediately got married and had a child. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. People, you have to be sure to get wild happy because, as you know, it's far more goodies in this book than the things that we've been able to just cover here in these few moments that we were able to grab, Ryan. You guys have to go over, get wild, happy from wherever. And even, oh, and his last name um, is Casso, C-A-S-S-E-A-U is the way you spell that. Ryan, R-Y-A-N, Casso, C-A-S-S-E-A-U. And his book is called Wild happy. You will not be disappointed by getting, because you already know. And you can tell from um, the way he is speaking now, everything is is just coming out naturally, sincerely, honestly. Um, And you know that you're going to get that same personality in this book, but you're going to be getting a lot more details as to some of the findings that um, his research uncovered, as well as, of course, you're going to get a lot more of these little quibs in there as well that you've already, I'm sure, enjoyed as much as I did. And now people head over right now. Amazon, um, of course, is has already listed him as a bestseller there. Let's go ahead and make sure that he's a bestseller, period. People go out, buy the book from anywhere you can. Make sure that this guy is on the New York Times bestsellers list or any and everybody bestsellers list as well and ryan congratulations on already being a best-selling author well thank you so much oh you are welcome and my very last question to you is what is there 
that you would like to be sure to share with the listeners of Articulation Radio that you've not yet had a chance to express? Well, I mean, you know, I think for I, I speak for all authors, right? And the, the reason we write these books is is because we want to share these stories. And so, you know, these are these are unique experiences, not not only my own in this book, but but you know, all of the authors out there with these books. I know that it's it's really hard. There are so many books and so many people putting out so many amazing things. I mean, for me, I mean, Wild Happy is 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 certainly a, a labor of love from a, a very unique experience. I sort of had time with with friends and relatives that you know they were actually the ones that pushed me. You know, during COVID, uh, you know, when we weren't able to travel and weren't allowed to go about all of these you know you know experiences. And, and I had so many people saying, you know, why why don't you write this out? Why don't you, you know, put this all together? And and uh, I really appreciated them saying that. And now that it's out there, um, it, it's it's I've really just been completely flattered and honored with with a lot of the, you know, the five star reviews and, and a lot of the the, you know, the the readership and, and the feedback. So, I mean, this, this is an adventure. If, if you feel like you're a little trapped. Uh, because you can't go out and explore the world, then I'm hoping I can, you know, provide a little bit of a, a little vicarious adventure for some people um, with with maybe some of those, you know, kind of life lessons and perspectives that that I certainly gleaned from that experience. Beautiful, beautiful people. Don't deny yourself because you know that you definitely could stand a little vicarious living. And yeah, I know that your life is already filled with a whole bunch of adventure, but you know you want to have a few more. And wouldn't it be great (laughs) to take a virtual trip to Papua New Guinea right now and to be able to meet shamans and witches and local people and the youngsters going to the city and, you know, the, I mean, when you like to have these experiences too, plus be able to identify um, some new methods of healing, some new techniques. So, you know, we can never have too much knowledge, but definitely once we apply it, that's when we'll be able to get that wisdom that we know we want. And Ryan, let me ask you this. I know I said that was your last one, but let me ask you real quick. (laughs) Um, Have you applied um, any of the, um, healing from any of the plants? Have you tried any of those? And um, how did it work, if so? I had a lot of experience. I mean, a lot of the, you know, different types, especially things that I could see act really quickly. You know, you get like rashes, bug bites, and all this stuff. And people would say, oh, just hold on a second. They'd run over, grab something, mix it with a little water or coconut milk and put it on. And oh, yeah, things were, things were curing up wow. fast, cut, bruises, everything. I mean, it was yeah, I got to experience a lot of it. Yeah, people, you want to get this book, Wild Happy. Go over and get it right now. Ryan, thank you so much for coming on to Articulation Radio. We look forward to hosting you anytime you have anything going on, whether you have any book signings coming up or whether you have other books coming out. You are definitely welcome to come back here at any time. And do you have any of those on the horizon? Well, you know, COVID is tough. We're trying to get things set up. And I think the second, you know, the second we started to get things set up, then Delta variant made things pretty tough again. So, you know, we're trying, yeah. uh, I think we might might have to shift things virtually, you know, finally starting to accept that, you know, that in-person book signing world just, uh, you know, might be a, a little too far out on the horizon. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> yes. And, thank and you all so of us much for this. have that I, same thing. Oh, yeah, you are I, welcome. Uh, Truly has been my pleasure. Yeah, mine as well, really. Yes, sir. Well, listeners, you be sure to stay tuned. But in the meantime, head over and grab up Wild Happy by Ryan Casso, R-Y-A-N-C-A-S-S-E-A-U, Wild Happy. I'm going to roll some more coats for you. Stay tuned. Media Room 360 TV. Media Room 360 TV is a channel that has something for everyone, from world news, inspiration, programming for kids, politics, sports, technology, and entertainment. Media Room 360 TV has got you covered. Check out one of our shows today on Roku. Media Room 360 Internet Television on Roku. And if you need a speaker, head over to Media Room 360 Speakers at MediaRoom360.com. That's MediaRoom360.com.
That was Good Times Are Coming by LM Styles. Up next, I have I Got Doubts by Spring Gang featuring Vicky Vox. But before that, I'm going to go ahead and play You Don't Know by our very own Goddess Sage. And then we'll close out the show with Your Mind by The Furthermore's featuring Vincent Vega. If you'd like more information on how you can be an eyelash artist, call us at 314-560-1641 or 888-585-LASH, lashingoutloudinc.com. Articulation Radio thanks you so much for listening, so head on over right now to articulationmedia.club and let us know your thoughts on today's episode. In the meantime, we're going to keep the show rolling for you. Are you looking for grant writers, technical writers, creative writers, academic writers, any kind of writers? Head to the Writers Consortium. Their website, writersconsortium.us, www.writersconsortium.us, the Writers Consortium, writersconsortium.us, for all of your writing needs. Think of it, they can produce it for you. They are the ghost writers to the top people.
like a motivational speaker to come to your company or organization to speak to your group, visit lifespurposeministries.com. That's lifespurposeministries.com. For a better thing Wanna replace me I'm in a place that I've never been It's worse and lonely Cause someone tell me they see good in me There's good in me Cause I got doubts I got doubts I got doubts, yeah Sometimes I wanna risk it all Since you left me Struggle, baby, I see pain are expensive but your love is worth it go to marryusnow.us to book the minister of love to officiate your wedding today the fee is only two hundred dollars if your wedding is in the city of chicago and there's only a small fee to get the minister of love to travel outside of chicago to your wedding location book the minister of love today visit marryusnow.us that's marry us now dot u s Somebody that I find never gets that. 
want to buy stocks, jewels, real estate, or other high-end items? Would you love to be able to contribute to charitable initiatives but cannot do these things with the money you currently have? Join Regal City Investment and Social Club where you can pool money each month with other investors to make major purchases, give to the needy, and possibly turn a profit. www.regalcity.xyz Become a Regal Citizen today by joining Regal City Investment and Social Club. Regal City. Dot X Y Z. My people, my fam, my folks, I thank you so much. We all here at Articulation Radio, thank you so much for tuning in today and making us a part of what it is that you do. We encourage you to go over to our website, articulationmedia.club, and let us know not only what you think about today's episode, but make sure that your music your interview and your ad all take place right here on this station, Articulation Radio. Go to articulationmedia.club right now and hook yourself up. Make sure that you do that so you can hook other people up. But be sure to tune in again on Articulation Radio. We'll catch you again soon. And in the meantime, you already know, keep being a doer, keep being a move maker, and keep making things happen. Articulation. Articulation.